What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, the Time Teller. Now guys, I'm very excited because I just recently picked up a Grail G-Shock, okay? This watch has been on my list for quite some time and I finally pulled the trigger on it, so okay. To be perfectly honest, it's one of the more pricey G-Shocks when we're looking at their overall roster, but I wanna go ahead and unbox it and we can see what the hype is all about. It's 1.04 p.m. Let's get down to business. <laughs> All right, guys, check out this beautiful table here. Uh, we have a little impromptu unboxing. I'm currently wearing my G-Shock GX56 BB1, known as the King G-Shock, but there's one G-Shock that's even, I don't know, higher royalty. Check it out, guys. I'm gonna zoom in for you. If I can figure it out, there we go. The G-Shock GWG-1000A1. Now for you Casio buffs, you know what's in this box and uh, we're gonna go ahead and unbox it right now. A lot of paperwork, warranty card, and an enormous manual. G-Shocks come with notoriously large manuals. This one I will actually have to read because of the functionality of this watch. This watch does pretty much everything. So of course it's a G-Shock so it comes in a little tin. Oh yeah. All right, now guys, I did not bring my macro lens, but we are going to zoom in here. I'm pretty sure that you guys get the picture. Uh, this is the newest Mudmaster triple sensor. Um, I do not know how to use it yet, obviously, because I just unboxed it, but we're gonna go ahead and take a look at that manual. And then the next time I jump on the screen, I will know exactly how this works, but um, so far it looks like there's temperature, barometer. I know this has a compass and of course it tells the time. So um, yeah, I'm gonna be wearing this one until I figure out how to set this one and that might take, I don't know, maybe a week to figure out, but we're gonna try to figure it out. All right, how cool is this? See here, it says mud resist. This is the mud master and it says triple sensor, multi-band, tough solar protection, G-Shock, water resistance 20 bar. So this one has a 200 meter water resistance rating. And this is the one with the yellow second hand, some yellow little um, splashes in there. And this has, uh, it's kind of, I don't know if you can pick it up in this light, but this is kind of like a OD green. Um, and that's kind of, that's my jam. So this, this is the one to get in my opinion. I believe there's three different variants and uh, I'll have the editor throw up all the, the different pictures there. Um, of the mud masters but this in my opinion is the one to get all right i am back with my brand new casio g-shock mud master the big boy this is the triple sensor uh it does a whole lot and we're gonna get into that in a moment but i gotta be perfectly honest with you it wasn't nearly as intimidating to figure out as i thought it would be pretty much right out the box it only took me like 10 minutes of messing with it and i'm pretty confident i can use all the functions and features so the first accolade I want to give this watch is that it's pretty intuitive and kind of idiot proof and guys that cannot be understated okay easy use kind of idiot proof functionality intuitiveness is that a word in in into intuitivity it's easy to use, okay, and clearly I'm an idiot. So that's a big deal, especially when you consider how much this watch does. Let's go ahead and read the spec sheet. It might take an hour, but um, let's go ahead and read it from Casio's website. Intu... I'm gonna just type that in. Intuitive... Intuitiveness. Yeah, intuitiveness is a word. My mom told me I was smart. All right, here we go. The entire spec sheet on my new Casio G-Shock Master of G Mudmaster GWG1001A3. The name is already enormous, so the spec sheet is gonna be just gargantuan. All right, this watch has multi-band atomic timekeeping. It receives time calibration radio signals which keep the displayed time accurate. Auto receive function up to six times per day. Uh, manual receive function, uh, tough solar power, shock resistance, mud resistance. Um, buttons use a cylinder type guard structure with gaskets uh, and cylinders to prevent mud and dust from getting into the watch. Vibration resistance, alpha gel, R uh, it has a tough movement um, auto hand home position correction we're gonna talk about that um, smart smart access 
Crown with Quick Lock. Uh, we're gonna talk about the Crown as well. Uh, 200 meter water resistance rating, a flyback function, hands move away from the LCD screen during measurements. Uh, again, a really cool feature. So you'll notice this little display down here. Um, when you're using some of the functions and if the hands happen to be blocking it, um, when you switch into those settings, the hands actually move away. So really, really cool feature. Um, of course, it has the triple sensor. Um, you're getting an altimeter, you're getting a compass, and uh, a thermometer. Let's see, you're getting a world time function with 29 time zones, five daily alarms, hourly time signal, stopwatch, of course the full auto calendar, countdown timer, and storage battery. This is solar. All right, so that was an enormous spec sheet, but um, it's very, very cool and very usable. So I'm actually gonna bring you up close. We're gonna talk about wearing this watch and using it and uh, kind of how some of the features work and how I feel about them. And then we're gonna go over the pros and cons of this new new big boy triple sensor Mudmaster. All right, so here it is, my new Mudmaster. We're gonna go over some of the buttons and kind of the functionality here. Um, so one thing I really love, these buttons are metal, dude, and they're very, very tough, but easy to press. You don't have to really push super hard. Like one thing that bothered me about my GX56 BB1, the King G-Shock, I love that G-Shock. Feels super duper tough, but I'm a big, strong dude, if I, if I do say so myself. But pushing the buttons, it's really, Really, really hard okay it's very difficult these are very easy to change so if we look at this display down here um, this lower left button kind of your menu setting okay so you're able to scroll time function barometer temperature recall stopwatch timer alarm and world time you see the time changing there um, and it shows the second hand shows New York time because I'm checking out my uh, East Coast bros over there. I'm originally a New Englander, um, but if we want to switch back to time mode, you'll notice it's going back to West Coast time, uh, shifts there automatically. Now, one thing I really love about this button here is, let's say we want uh, the recall setting, okay? But let's say um, really quickly I want to check the time. I don't have to keep scrolling super fast. All I have to do is press and hold and boom, it takes me right back to timekeeping mode. So again, no matter which setting you're in, if you wanna quickly check the time, you just hold this for like two seconds and it shoots right back to timekeeping mode. Very, very cool. Now you do have dedicated buttons for certain functions, like here, the altimeter, you just press it, boom, um, altimeter mode. And then here, my favorite setting of this whole watch, compass mode. So here, it is gonna find north. Okay, and uh, here it tells you the degrees and where uh, I'm facing. And the coolest part is this is north. Um, I know where I am right now, obviously I'm in the office, um, but this does a very good job tracking north. It is crazy how accurate it is. Um, I've been standing next to my Jeep right now. I'm next to a camera and a tripod and a computer. And uh, these metal things around me are not messing with this compass one bit. Um, very, very cool, very true. And again, there's something to be said about things that just work the way they're supposed to. How often do you buy a product, you're excited to use it, and it's just kind of wonky? Well, this with this Mudmaster, that's not the case. This works perfectly right out the box. Very, very happy. Again, that compass, probably my favorite feature on this entire watch. And again, we're in the compass mode, but let's say I wanna go back to timekeeping. I don't have to shift through the menus. I just press this lower left-hand button and uh, boom, shoots me right back to timekeeping. All right, now let's go ahead and focus on this button right here, the upper left-hand button. This controls what info is displayed on this little digital readout. So right now it has Monday, uh, April the 8th. Let's say I just want 4-8. Let's say I just want a digital readout of the time, okay? So let's say I don't want to futz with reading uh, analog time. I can press this button a few times and get a digital display. Um, so very, very cool. All right, so one thing I never thought I'd talk about when it comes to G-Shocks, Loom. This Mudmaster has incredible loom, okay? This knocked my socks off when I first saw it. Um, again, I never, never even consider loom when I think of my G-Shocks. I think of backlights, right? Well, this watch does not have a backlight. It has ridiculously bold, vibrant loom, and this button right here, let me make it even darker, 
controls a little LED light. Now, why is this such a cool feature? Well, you'll notice the LED shines right on that digital display. Um, so you're getting that display lit up and also what I found at night, um, I took this out with my Jeep at night and uh, I noticed when I press this button, it gives me enough light to, to see the time and see all the different functions on the dial, but it doesn't mess with my natural night vision. So, you know at nighttime, um, I don't, uh, some of you science nerds out there probably know the exact amount of time it takes, but when you stay outside in low light, your eyes eventually acclimate, right? Um, well, the cool thing is when you shoot this light off, it doesn't wash out your, your night vision, right? Um, it doesn't mess with your eyes. Uh, it just gives you enough light to easily see the dial and that's it, it won't mess with you. Whereas some of the other G-Shock's backlights, you know, they just blast you with some light, especially if you're in pitch black scenarios. So, um, very, very cool touch. Kind of, kind of a little thing to talk about when it comes to um, a G-Shock, but yeah, this light, very, very cool. All right, so we've taken a closer look at the Mudmaster. We've seen some of its features and functionality, but undubitably, someone is at home thinking, <laughs> my Apple Watch can do all of that and more. Cool. It's true, okay? An Apple Watch can, uh, you know, navigate you. It has GPS. You can make a phone call with it. You can even order a pizza by simply pressing a button on the Apple Watch's screen. That's actually pretty cool. But the G-Shock doesn't have a 200 meter water resistance rating. It doesn't have vibration resistance. Uh, you can't bang on it. You can't leave it in the mud. The Apple Watch has the technology. It does not at all have the resilience. So guys, let's go ahead and wrap up this episode with a pros and cons list. Now, I have a little list in front of me, something that I've compiled while I've been wearing this watch for a few days, about a week actually, um, and uh, the pros list is kind of straightforward, okay? It's tough, obviously. The metal buttons, incredible, uh, very easy to push, but again, feels very solid. In fact, the whole watch feels incredibly solid. Sapphire crystal, great loom, that triple sensor, I mean, a freaking compass, an altimeter, a thermometer, amazing. But again, guys, the overall tough, resilient structure, you expect that from a G-Shock. Now, something I really do want to talk about again is just just the ease of use. This watch seemed kind of intimidating, even to me, the time teller. Uh, the, it had a really thick book and I knew that this thing had a ton of different functions. I didn't know how long it would take me to actually uh, figure out. It took me not that long at all. So again, uh, the intuitiveness, I think that's a word, um, huge plus, huge plus. So again, pros list, very straightforward but we gotta talk about the cons. The first con about this Mudmaster, although I love it, uh, kind of a big con, it's big. The dimensions right here, 59.5 by 56.1 by 18 millimeters. I'm a big dude. Uh, and I have seven and a half inch wrists and this thing's still humongous on me. So if you're a smaller guy, something to take into consideration. Now, I'm not gonna defend this watch too much, but um, another thing we kind of have to think about, this thing is big because it has a freaking triple sensor and it needs to be big enough that you can actually read all the information it's giving you. So again, not trying to defend it, but but um, there's a reason why it's, it's that big. The next con, um, this thing has a crown, okay? It has a freaking crown. Now, it is a cool feature. I'm gonna explain why I've put it on the cons list. Now, um, this watch has a ton of different menus and settings and information it's trying to give you. So instead of adding a million different buttons, Casio decided to add a threaded crown that you can unthread and use as kind of a scroll select mouse. Now, the reason this is on the cons list is because I can see people picking up a G-Shock and not really really uh, used to having one have a crown and you know they're on the trail they unthread it they go into some setting uh, they go out on their hike and they forget to thread it and then they've ruined their brand new G-Shock so um, again it's not that the crown itself is a huge uh, vulnerability it's just that I can see users not being used to a G-Shock having one so um, I've added I've added that to the cons list. Another con is the price, okay? This watch is pricey when it comes to G-Shocks, listed at $750 on Casio's site, but you can find it right around $500 at the Time Teller Shop. I know, a little shameless plug there. Uh, sometimes it's even below $500. So click the link in the description below if you're interested. Go ahead and pick one up. And the final con I could find about this watch is that kind of makes me not want to wear my other G-Shocks. I know, kind of a silly thing to say, almost blasphemous. I have a few other G-Shocks that I absolutely love. And uh, if I'm going out on the trail with my Rubicon or Connie and I are taking a little day hike and I want to wear a G-Shock, 
kind of hard to reach for anything but this. Now, I, it's probably a little bit of the honeymoon phase going on, but come on, a freaking compass. It's, it's just so cool. I always want to wear it when I'm going out. And um, yeah, who knows? Maybe that kind of lust will wear off a little bit, but right now it is still going strong. But that being said, okay, that being said, although I really do love this when it comes to G-Shocks, this is kind of the ultimate G-Shock in my opinion, I would not recommend this as an everyday piece, okay? And there are G-Shocks I would recommend. If you're looking for a really tough, super duper functional, really versatile watch that you can wear every day, don't get this Mudmaster, okay? This is a bit overkill. Um, I would recommend something like this DW5600 E1V, still incredibly tough, still incredibly functional, but you can get it for like 40 bucks and it's not enormous. So again, if you want an everyday G-Shock, don't get this Mudmaster, get something like this. But if you want something that's an absolute beast that has a freaking triple sensor and uh, might save you if you're lost, I don't know. If you just want some overkill watch, get the Mudmaster. This is so badass. But there you have it, guys. If you couldn't tell, I am just thrilled with my new G-Shock Mudmaster. I'd love to hear your opinions on it. Is it too big? Is it kind of ugly? Does it look like a toy? I've heard someone say that already in my Instagram comments. Um, but leave me a comment. I want to hear from you. We can debate and, and continue the conversation there. So leave me a comment. I will read it and I might reply if you try to make fun of my G-Shock. And again, guys, I wanna thank you so much for supporting the channel and shopping at the Time Teller Shop. I got 5600 E1Vs, I got Mudmasters in all different variants, uh, so check them out. Click the link in the description below. You help me out and, and keep me here on YouTube, and guys, it does not go unnoticed, the support you give me, uh, so I love you guys. Click that link, shop around, check out the Time Teller Shop. And if you're new here, if this is your first time joining us here at the Time Teller channel, well, thank you so much for stopping by, but let's make this relationship a little bit more official go ahead click that subscribe button it takes one second and it helps me out a ton and while you're at it you can go ahead and click that little bell icon because YouTube does a terrible job notifying my subscribers when I upload and I upload all the time you do not want to miss out like comment subscribe shows with other watch enthusiasts other people you think would enjoy this I'm Jory Goodman the time teller and always remember I didn't invent time I just tell it all right, well, if you enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing to the channel because there's a whole lot more where that came from. Also, I have no idea how YouTube works yet. Hopefully in the future, I'll get the hang of it. But I think there should be some recommended videos for you to watch. There might be one over on this side of the screen. There might be one over on this side of the screen. Who knows where they're gonna be? YouTube's always changing. Life is always changing. You know, there's a lot to learn about life. Um, we'll save this for another episode. Anyway, click one of these videos, watch it, subscribe to the channel. I love you. Nice, okay, let's flip the camera around and dab.